All right, so this morning we're going to talk about spiritual warfare tools, uh, and I, I just think it's uh, such an ordained thing that uh, Dennis and Bill were talking about that verse that, uh, that Dennis just read, and, and we're going in and we're talking about spiritual warfare today and talking about the tools that uh, we can use to fight, and here's, here's the reality, we got to use the right tools if we're going to stand up and we're going to we're going to fight in the spiritual war that we're in. You ever show up to a, to a job or to a task or you need to do something and you don't have the right tools? Like, am I the only one that's gone on a trip and then something breaks down on your car and you're on the side of the road and it's snowing outside and you're just trying to get to Wisconsin and the alternator goes out and you don't have the right tools? I'm just saying, like, this has maybe not ever happened or maybe it happened last year. I don't, can't tell you. But you don't have the right tools, and you just think, if I could just have the right tools, I could knock this out, it would be done. You ever been there? No? Yes? Good. Thank you for encouraging me in that. I just needed that. Let's talk about... No. We need, we need to go into this with the right tools. We've been talking about spiritual warfare for the past couple of weeks, and how the struggle that we're in is real. The struggle against Satan, against the things that he uses against us, and over the last couple of weeks, we've been kind of just setting the, the groundwork for what this looks like. Uh, and Joe did a good job for a couple of weeks of just introducing this topic and talking about who Satan is and what this struggle is about. Last week, uh, we really dove into all the different areas that Satan uses in order to attack us. And then today, we're going to move into, okay, so what do we do about this? How do we engage in this fight? And really, what are the tools that we use in order to, in order to fight and in order to engage in this struggle? We're in this struggle. We are in this fight and we don't fight the normal way. Like, I would much prefer if we could just kind of get up our dukes and go hand to hand here. But that's not necessarily how we engage in this fight. We're not using fisticuffs. We're not bringing gu guns and knives, although this is Wyoming, and so we maybe need to be open to that a little bit. In order to engage in this fight, though, this spiritual warfare fight that we're in, we have to use the right tools. And so this morning, we want to look at six tools that we can use in order to be effective in this, in this fight. And so you can work your way through uh, on the bulletin. Uh, there's six, six different things that you can kind of fill in through there as, uh, as we work our way through here. You can also follow along on the screen behind me. And so let's jump into these six tools in order to be effective in this fight. The first one is this. We need to use courage. We need to use courage as we engage in the battle, in the spiritual battle that is going on around us. And I, and I know as I'm studying through this and I'm thinking, well, courage, really? Like, does that even need to be said? Does it need to be said that we need to stand up and, and fight courageous? We need to be courageous as we engage. In the, does this really need to be said? I, part of me says no, but the other part of me is like, there's many times that I'm just not courageous. There's many times that I want to back off, that I just want to... Just want to hide away from the fight. Don't blow past this too quickly. If we don't have courage to stand up and to fight, if we don't have courage to engage in this, to resist the devil's attacks and the world's persecution, if we don't have courage, we are going to lose the fight before it really even begins. We must have courage to fight. It takes courage to engage. This is why Paul said, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13, he said this, Be alert, stand firm in the faith, act like a man, be strong. The New King James Version says, that, says it this way, Watch, stand fast in the, face, in the faith, be brave, be strong. It takes courage, church. It takes courage to, to stand up and to resist the devil. It takes courage in the face of the world pulling us towards it. It takes courage for us to stand up and say, I am going to fight. I am going to resist the devil. So we need to use courage. Secondly, second tool, we need to use determination. Use determination. This is Paul encouraged Timothy this way in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight for the, fight for the faith. Take hold of eternal life that you were called to and have a good confession of, about uh, the presence or in the presence of many witnesses. I remember when I was in high school, you know, oftentimes my, my friend and I from high school, we were talking about this yesterday, actually. Uh, you know, when you're in high school and you're doing things like playing football, they say, oh, in 10 years, you're, when fall comes, you're going to really miss going to two-a-days. 
So I'm 10 years out, 11 years out now. I do not miss two days at all. Anybody? No, no, no. So when we were in high school, we would do two-a-day practices for a couple weeks before school started. I, I remember these very well because they were uh, apparently a legal way of torture. So you would get up way too early in the morning, and you would go, and you would run, and you would do drills, and you'd be running plays. You'd be doing all these things, and you know, about two or three hours into it, they would say, okay, we're almost done, and you think, oh, good, we're getting done. We get to take a break. And then we would walk across the street, and in Baird, Nebraska, the high school sits on the south side of the road, the elementary school sits on the north, and behind the elementary school is a hill normally used for the elementary kids to sled down when it snows. Uh, we would run up and down it. It was a sand hill. The sand was deep. It was very tall. We would just spend like a half an hour just running up and down this hill, and you literally thought you were going to die. And I think back on this, and I think it takes determination to make it through stuff like this, especially for, for freshman, sophomore in high school that think that football is going to be kind of this fun thing that you're going to do for a while. It takes determination to make it through that. But when you have determination through something like that, the benefits are huge in your life. The benefits are huge in your life. And when we engage in the spiritual battle and we have determination in our faith, Nowhere in this are we promised an easy life of following Jesus necessarily. It takes grit. It takes determination to engage in the, in the battle for the long haul. But God uses that. Throughout Scripture, we read that, that our determination and our working through struggles and our working through trial, it, it, it builds our faith. And it builds us, builds us as followers of Jesus. If you decide and desire to last and remain in this fight, you must have determination, but it'll benefit you. And so we need determination. We need to use determination in this fight. Thirdly, we need to use watchfulness. We need to be watchful. We need to, to see what is going on around us. Peter says it this way, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. He says, be serious, be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for anyone to devour. Resist him and be firm in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are being experienced by your fellow believers throughout the world. How aware are we? I mean, really. Like, we can come here and we can talk about spiritual warfare and we can say, oh yeah, I know it's there. But during the week, in the middle of your work day, while you're binge-watching Netflix at home, anybody do that? Probably not. Are you aware of the spiritual battle that's taking place in your life? Are we, are we really watching for the spiritual war that is taking place around us? We've been talking about it for a few weeks, and we kind of be thinking along those lines, but when this stops in a month from now and in a year from now, are we still going to be watchful for the spiritual battle that is taking place around us in our lives every moment of every single day? Satan is currently trying to derail you, and Satan will continue to try to derail you and defeat you. Are you watching? Are you aware? Or do you just coast through? Because you can't engage in the battle that you don't even realize is happening around you. You can't even engage in the spiritual war that is taking place when you're not even looking for it in your life around you. If we are going to do what verse 9 says, that Peter said there in verse 9, and resist the devil, we have to actually be watching for him. We have to be ready. We have to be watching for where Satan is prodding and attacking and tempting us. We need to be watchful for when the world tries to lie to us, to seduce us, to tempt us back to it. We need to be watchful for the times when our own flesh desires what it wants. We need to be watchful. Fourthly, and honestly, this is the one that, you know, when, when you ask, well, what do you do to fight the spiritual war that's going on around us? This is like the go-to answer. So here's your, here's your Sunday school answer. Are you ready? Number four, use the armor. Use the armor. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 17 gives us a description of the armor that we are to put on in order to ready ourselves for spiritual battle going on around us. Read this with me. Paul says, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. For our battle is not against 
flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. This is why you must take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything, take your stand. Verse 14, stand therefore with truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take the shield of faith and with it, you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is God's word. So let's work through this a little bit, because this is not just a children's story that we teach our children that we ignore when we are adults. This is actual practical tools that we get to use in our lives every single day. The belt of truth. This is our foundation. This is our foundation. This is what holds everything else together for us, is truth. Biblical truth is what everything else is based on, and it's one of the major areas that's being attacked right now. In our world, in our lives, in our culture, truth is under attack. We need the belt of truth as our foundation holding everything else together. The breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate, or the body armor, is what protects the vital organs for a soldier. Righteousness in our lives, is the evidence that we have been made right with God and that we are being created into who he desires for us to be. And Satan wants to attack that. Satan wants to break down our righteousness, break down our, our belief that we are being created day after day into who God wants us to be. He wants to, Satan wants to convince us otherwise. The shoes of peace, the, the sandals of peace, Standing firm with with shoes of peace that comes from the gospel. Standing firm in the gospel, sharing that gospel gives peace to those who see it, as well as those who receive it and who hear it as well. Then we have the shield of faith. It's really uh, just complete reliance on God and his protection and his guidance in our life. Faith ultimately is total dependence on God. And willingness to accept wherever God is leading us. It's believing his promises when when Satan throws arrows of temptation. When Satan tries to derail us, to deceive us in any way. It's believing God's promises. The shield of faith gives us strength to stand against Satan and his attacks against us. Then we have the helmet of salvation. As we've said over the last few weeks, much of the spiritual battle happens where? In our minds, in between our ears. The helmet protects the deadly blows to the head, to our minds. Satan wants to attack, I think, greater than anything else in this, he wants to attack our certainty and our salvation. He wants us to question whether or not, are you really saved? Did God really provide Jesus to die for you? Are are you really receiving salvation? Is eternal life sure for you? Maybe I'm the only one who struggles with these thoughts sometimes, and that is Satan taking blows to our mind. The helmet protects and ensures that our salvation is sure and that God's promises are sure. And then we have the sword of the Spirit. And honestly, this is really about the only offensive weapon that you see in this armor, isn't it? The only offensive weapon mentioned in this list, the the Spirit makes the Word of God effective as it is spoken. God's Word can be used against Satan's attacks. We see this throughout Scripture. Jesus did this while he was in the desert being tempted by Satan, that he, he spoke the Word of God and Satan backed off. And we have the Spirit here that gives the power of the Word when it is used. Don't think this is childish. Don't think that this is below us as adults or as people who have been going to church for for years and years. This isn't just some imagery that that we teach to other people. Without truth as our foundation, everything else falls apart. Without righteousness being had, we will be attacked by Satan. Without the gospel believed and shared, there is no hope for peace. Without faith, there is no trusting God's hand and direction as being good in our lives. Without salvation known, Satan will turn us towards him. Without the Spirit, there is no power to resist Satan. These are 
actual tools that we use to engage in this fight. And then that leads us to the fifth one, which comes right after this if you're following along in your Bibles. We need to use prayer. Use prayer. Right after Paul talks about the armor that we just got done reading and talking about, he gives us prayer. Ephesians chapter 6, verse, verse 12. Paul says, pray at all times in the Spirit with every prayer and request, and stay alert in this with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. So many times, if you're like me, you want to just engage. You want to get to work. You want to, you want to get, get in and you want to fight. You want to see results. You want to take ground. And what Paul is saying here is that in the spiritual war, we need to pray. You need to stop and you need to pray. In the spiritual war, don't always just try and do things. We need to stop and we need to pray. Paul says pray in every occasion. Pray in the good Pray in the bad, pray in the peace, pray during the war. He says to pray with every request. He says to stay alert in prayer with all the saints. Prayer brings a connection between us and God during this, this war, during this battle. Prayer helps us honestly to slow down, which many of us need in our lives. Prayer helps us to speak out on what is going on. Prayer helps us to hear God in the midst of sometimes very difficult things that are going on around us. We need to remember to use prayer. It's one of the simplest things, and it's one of the most foundational and elementary things that we can talk about, and yet it's one of the things that I think we forget most as we're engaging in this battle, as we're engaging in the spiritual war. We need to remember to use prayer. Number six, in all that we do, we do all of this in God's strength. We do all of this in God's strength. This passage in Ephesians that we've kind of been capped on for the last uh, few weeks and really for the couple points this morning, this passage in Ephesians begins with probably the most important part of this, uh, this whole equation that needs to be remembered. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. Be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. The reality is is that you cannot fight this fight. You cannot engage in this battle. You cannot engage in this struggle without first leaning into God. We cannot win this by ourselves. We will be defeated if we rely only on our own strength. We can struggle, but we cannot win if we try and do it on our own. But God is there, and God fights for us. And God fights with us. God is there with us. And if we don't lean into him, then we are going to fail. And we have to remember that. And so many times we forget that. I think I get overwhelmed with the struggle, with the spiritual battle that's going on around me and around us. It's easy just to forget, if nothing else, that that God is there with us. And that he fights with us and he's in the battle with us and for us. I forget that he's given us the tools that we need in order to engage into this fight, in order to engage into this battle. We are given courage to step out and to fight boldly and strongly. We are given determination to continue to fight and to continue to persevere in this. We are given watchfulness to be ready and waiting for for Satan's attacks against us, being aware that it's happening around us. We're given the armor of God in which we're giving, given the truth that we can stand on that reveals lies and reveals deceit. We're given righteousness that we're growing and becoming more like Christ. We're given peace of the gospel, knowing that Satan is defeated. We're given faith, knowing firmly that God is in control even when situations don't seem like it around us. We're given salvation, knowing that our eternity is secure because of what Christ did on the cross. And we're given the Spirit the power and the fight that, that fights with us. And we have prayer. And we communicate with God during this time, and we join other believers to communicate about what is going on around us. And we are most importantly given God's strength in order to engage into this fight 
with us during the most difficult times of battle. We have these tools, church. Do we use them? Do we remember them and do we use them? Do we engage in spiritual battle around us? Do we stand up every morning and have courage and determination to engage in the fight? Do we wake up every morning and say, I'm going to prayerfully lean on God's strength during this day? Do we stand on things like truth and faith and salvation every day that help us persevere through this struggle? Do we stand on these things? Do we remember these things? If we are aware of the war that is going on around us and the ways that we can combat, we can be successful, and this church can be successful in combating the war that's going on around us as well. Church, we can together be successful in this. We can can be successful in engaging the spiritual war that is going on around us that is very real if we turn and if we engage and if we choose to stand up and say, I'm not going to ignore it, I'm going to engage in it. We're given the tools. Next week, I hope you join us as we talk about, ultimately, how we're going to win. How is this this spiritual war, how is this battle won? But as we stop today and as we just think about what tools we are given, let us not forget these. Because the spiritual war is going on around us now. It's not waiting until we're done with this next week. Engage in the battle. Use the tools that you have in this battle now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I am uh, I'm thankful for your word, and I am thankful ultimately for you and for um, just your involvement and your, and your love for us. Father, thank you that you, you don't leave us to struggle through this uh, spiritual war that is taking place around us every single day. Thank you that you don't leave us to that alone, to fight alone, to, to figure out what to do by ourselves. But Father, you give us tools in order to engage in this struggle, to engage in this fight every single day that help us win. And Father, I just pray that as we are engaging in the spiritual war today, this week, right now in our lives, that we would uh, courageously step up and be determined to fight, that we would be watchful for what's going on around us, that prayerfully we would be engaging by using the armor that you give us, and that ultimately we would be leaning on you in order to, to do this. Father, thank you. Thank you that uh, we, have con- we can have confidence knowing that you don't leave us alone in this, that you are there with us, fighting with us, fighting for us, and that ultimately, as we're going to talk about next week, you have won this battle. And we uh, are thankful for that. I thank you for that. Father, help us to engage. Give us the strength and the courage to step up and to engage in the spiritual war going on around us. Thank you for Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. It's in your son, Jesus' name. It's in his name that I pray. Amen.